Hey everybody, this is Bob from Wham's Tech, and today we're going to continue with our Gamification Glide app, and this one's all about dice rollers. I know this has been a popular topic on Twitter, and so I wanted to provide this for you as our next video. So let's get to it. So before we dive into it, let's just take a preview of what it's going to look like. So here we have uh, the ability to change what dice type you're rolling, the ability to choose one die or two, and the ability to re-roll your die and get an instant calculation and again, for any image. Okay, if you're rolling two die, you also get the total of that die. All right, let's go ahead and build it. So first thing we have to do is jump to the spreadsheet and create a new tab here called Dice. You see, I've already done this. Let me explain a little bit what I've done. So first thing is to create a number column, one through the maximum number of die that you want to roll. So if I want to roll just a maximum of a 10-sided die, you see that here. If I want to roll a maximum of a 20-sided die, right, I can do that like so, where, where then it would just count out to 20. All right, so I'm going to, for our tutorial, I'm just going to stop at 10, Let's keep things a little bit simple. Hey, then you're going to create a column that's going to house an image for each side of each die that you want to roll. So I have a column here for a four-sided dice, one for a six-sided, one for eight-sided, 10-sided. If I want to roll a 20-sided die, right, I have to create a new column here called 20-sided. And each row here is going to correlate to that number. And this is going to be an image of that dice side, right? So this is of side one of a four-sided die. This is side two of a four-sided die and so forth, okay? So just so you see it, uh, side two of a four-sided die will look like this. Um, die uh, side six of an eight-sided die looks like this. And uh, you can create these images yourself. If you want to find them online, you can do that. I think Teachers Pay Teachers has a collection. Uh, I created these myself just using an image of a blank die that I found online, and I superimposed the number on top of it. Um, I'm using a a program called Cloudinary, which I don't have time to get into for this tutorial. I'll do that for a later date, but uh, you could use Photoshop or whatever else to create all these images and then upload them to Google Drive and then create the links and put them here. You can, there's a variety of ways to get these images for these die, uh, but that's the name of the game. So you want to create an image per side per die, and each die is in its own column. Great. Next, we have to create an array column in our spreadsheet that is going to represent the side of the die and we're going to use this for relation purposes. So um, for each type of die that you want, you have to create another column here. Um, and we have to set this up so that it forms an array column. And again, an array column in Glide, just like we did with our badges, we need to um, name it with some sort of indicator here. So I just called mine side. Really, I probably should have called it dice, but whatever. Um, and then followed by a space, followed by a number in sequence, one through the number of side that we want. And again, it's got to be that format. It's got to be the, the word, space, then the number. It's got to be in sequence one through five or six, let's say. Uh, and then they have to be side by side in order. So you see here that I have a four-sided die, a six-sided die, eight-sided die, and a 10-sided die. And those are representing the number four, six, eight, and 10. And you see that I filled out that number only for the number of rows that correspond to that die. So for a four-sided die, I have the number four, and I'm only filling out the number four in the first four rows. Okay. I have the same thing for a six. An eight-sided die has the first eight rows. A 10-sided die has the first 10 rows. If I wanted to do a 20-sided die, I would call this side five, because again, it's got to be in order. And I would do the first 20 rows, and I'd fill it in with the number. Okay. Now, just so you understand the logic behind this, what we're going to end up doing here is grabbing a number, let's say, and when I choose a four-sided die, I'm going to put in the number four, and then I'm going to have that number four related to this number here. And it's going to spit back for me these four rows, which contain the numbers one through four, as well as the image one through four. And this is going to be an array column here because if I choose the number six, let's say, for if I want to roll a six-sided die, 
then I want to relate it to the one column called side, which is going to be our array column. And it's going to pick up the number 6 for the first six rows, which shows the numbers 1 through 6, and will eventually uh, give me the images of the 1 through 6. All right, we're going to go ahead and build that. All right. Uh, oh, and last thing is in our resources sheet, which is housing all of our options, I created another column here called sides with the numbers of the side of the dice that I want to roll. And again, if I wanted a 20-sided die, I pop the number 20 in here. And this is going to be our choice component to choose which type of die we're rolling. All right, got that. You can go back and pause the video, set up your um, spreadsheet just like that. Let's go ahead and continue. All right, in our app, we now need to create a tab for our die. So I'm going to come over here to tabs. I'm going to create a new tab. And I called mine dice. And it's referencing the dice sheet that you see here. And I found a nice image of a cube, so that way it represents a die, fine. Um, and I have that down over here. And on this tab, I am showing the details view of this die. And I am not having any filter on this because it's just going to be a generic tab with a user-specific column. So we're not going to need to have any filter on this. Uh, if you want to add a visibility condition, though, you might want to do that. So I'm going to add a visibility condition. Again, where has profile is true. That way, if they don't have a profile yet, they can. All right, so we have our tab set up for dice. It is in the details view. Uh, now let's go ahead and create some components. Um, before we do, we need a column here to accept the number of the dice side that we're rolling. And again, this should be a user-specific column. That way, if I'm using the app, or if you're using the app, we're going to have two different numbers that we can use. Okay? So to do that, come over here to the data editor, and you're going to add a new column. And this is going to be a number column. It's a new column. Come on. Okay. Um, this is going to be oh, come on. new column. And this is going to be a number column, so a basic column, number, and this is going to be a user-specific column. Upon checking this box, it's going to ask you to put in a row ID column. Go ahead and say yes, and then call this um, dice or uh, dice sides or something of that nature. I think I call mine dice sides. Uh, I did. Dice sides like this. And this is going to be a user-specific column. Now, for this tutorial, I made the mistake of making it an actual column in my spreadsheet. So, as you see, you see that here. You don't want this. Okay? You don't want this dice sides column here. This should be a user-specific column that only lives in the data editor. Because otherwise, if I'm using the app and you're using the app, when I choose six, it's going to override your choice component, which we don't want. So, this really shouldn't be there, so for the sake of this tutorial, pretend that this column is a user-specific column and that this column's icon is blue, making it a user-specific column. All right, so once we've created that user-specific column, now we can create our choice component here. And this choice component is going to reference that resources sheet and pull in those number of sides that we've chosen. So here I have 4 through 10. I'm making it required, so that way I'm not seeing that little dash over here. And I'm going to send it to that user-specific column called Dice Sides. All right. So when I write or click a number four here in my data editor, that Dice Sides column now says the number four. Cool. So now that we have this number, now we can do some fun things with it. So I have this number four, which means I want to roll a four-sided die, which means I need to relate this number four to those first four rows, which, which are going to contain the number one through four and our images for one through four. And so we're going to relate this number to that array column that got created because we named things side one, side two, five. OK. So just so you see it, this is our array column here. OK. Our array column, uh, you see the numbers four. Or you see the number four, and there's the first four rows, the number eight in the first eight rows, the number six in the first six rows, and the number 10 in the first 10 rows, which go all the way down. OK. So we're going to relate this number to this column, 
which is going to pull just these first four rows because these four rows are the only ones that contain the number four. See that? So we're gonna create a relation column here. I called mine rel side. And we're gonna relate that dice side user specific column that's from that choice component to our dice sheet, which we're already in, to that user, or sorry, the array column called side. It's gonna relate it to this array column. And we want to match multiple because the number four exists in multiple places. Okay. Uh, the next thing I did was created another user specific column. I made it a Boolean and I called it roll two dice. So again, this is a Boolean column from uh, the basic column Boolean. I called it roll two dice and I made it user specific. And this is going to be just a switch that's going to determine whether or not this user wants to roll one die or two, okay? Next, um, I have a lookup of the values available, okay? So this is going to be a lookup of the relation to side that we just created, and we're gonna pull the number column. So uh, because I have the number four is the one that I chose, I'm relating it to this array column, one, two, three, and four rows, and I'm doing a lookup of these four rows to grab the numbers available, one, two, and four, because these are gonna be the numbers on the side or side of the die, right? So if I chose six here, for example, okay, you now see that my relation pulls six values. The values available to look up now are the numbers one through six, okay? So you get the idea here, if I choose an eight, right? I now pull eight rows because it's relating it to these number eight in the first eight rows. And the values available on the lookup are one through eight and so forth. So if I do 10, not 80, okay, 10, it's now gonna relate this number 10 to all 10 rows because they all contain the number 10 in them, okay? Which means my lookup values are now the numbers one. Okay. So based on our choice component, we now have the ability to choose the numbers on that side of the die, one through the X, which X stands for the side of the die. So now that we have our values available, we now get to pick a number at random from those numbers. So to do that, we need to create a new column in Glide. It's gonna be a single value column. I called mine random value one. And we basically want it to choose a random number from one through X, where X is that number that we chose as our part of our choice component. So to do that, again, we did random, and we're gonna relate or choose the value to be the relationship to side. Because again, that relation to side column that we have here, behind the scenes here, is gonna have all the number of rows that we need based on what we chose. So if I am rolling a four-sided die, that means I only have four rows available to me as part of this relation, which means the random value that we're gonna grab is only gonna come from these first four rows. And we're gonna grab the number column that you see here, one, two, three, or four, which means that we're gonna get a random number one through four. Awesome. And just so you see that it's random right now, it picked the number four, if I go back, to the layout view and then back to the data view, we should see this number is different. Yeah, now we see that it's a three, okay? So every time you change screens, basically, it's gonna result in a, a different value. All right, so now I have this random value one through X, where X is the number of uh, sides that we're rolling. And if you wanna roll two die, then you have to create a second one. So I created a second single value column called random value two with the same setup. I'm grabbing the random of that relationship to side, grabbing the number column out of that, and now you see that I have two random numbers, one through four. All right? if I choose this to six, okay, uh, you see I now have still the four and the one because I haven't changed screens yet. If I change screens, okay, you now see that the numbers are six, or five and five, so I picked a random number out of, out of six. Now, if I'm rolling two die, just for my own ease, I wanna add those two values together. So I created a math column here called added values, where I am adding A plus B, where A is the random value one, and B is the random value two, and that's spitting back the total of these two random die. 
again, just so you see it, if I were to leave my view here, go back to the data editor, I should have two new random values and the math column should be adding them together to form seven. Now, if I'm not rolling two die, if I'm only rolling one die, then I don't want this math. I just want the first value. So I created an if then column here called if two, it's an if then else column. And I'm basically saying that, hey, if that roll two dice, right, that switch here, if this is true, that means that the user must be wanting to roll two die. And if that's the case, then I'm gonna grab the added values, that math column. Otherwise, if it's not true, the user must be only wanting to roll one die. And I'm just gonna grab the first value, this random value. And so you see here that right now it's a seven because I'm adding this together. But if I only wanna roll one die, and I uncheck this box, we see that our if column is now a five, not. We're gonna play, this will be come back to us in just a little bit. All right, so more fun. So now that we have these random numbers, five and a two, we need to grab the images for these numbers. So to do that, we need to relate this five and this two back to itself to grab that single row that's gonna have the image. So here I have this rel, this relationship to random value one, where I'm relating this random value one column here. I do, yeah, okay. So I'm relating this random value one, this five, back to itself in the dice sheet, and I'm referencing back the number column, that one through 10 in the far left side here. So this five is basically gonna pull this one row. And this is not a multiple relation, it's a single relation because I only wanna pull that one number, that one five. So I'm gonna pull a relation here for this row. And for, I have a, because I wanna roll two die, I have to create a second relation, same setup, relationship to random value two, where I'm relating now that random second value, two dice number, again, not multiple. And so now I have a relationship for value one, the first, so the roll, so for this fifth row, and then one for the second row. All right, now comes a little bit of a tedious task. Uh, we need to pull in the images for each of those die. So here I have um, a lookup of what the image would be for a four-sided die and for the second value. So this is a lookup of our four, I call it four-sided dice one. And I am doing the lookup of this relationship to random value and uh, this one here, okay? And I'm grabbing the image of the four-sided die, okay? So because my number here is a one, uh, this lookup for the four-sided die is gonna grab the image of the number one on a four-sided die. And this will be the image a second time for the second random value. Okay, so I'm doing a lookup for each die for each random value. So if I'm rolling two die, I'll need two lookups per uh, type of die. Okay, so here you see I have a lookup um, of the four sided die, the six sided die, the eight sided die, and the 10 sided die. Okay, uh, just so you see it here, if I were to roll a 10 sided die, <clears throat> not six, sided die, okay. My first random number here is a 10, which means that my four sided die and my six sided die and my eight sided die don't have a lookup value because that number 10 doesn't exist on those type of die, but it does pull it for my 10 sided die. Okay, pretty neat, right? Um, now, for some reason, these were pulled in as links while my 10-sided die was pulled as an image. We can actually change this now. We can change column types. So I don't want a link, actually. I want this to be an image. Look at that. So now it pulls the actual image here. Just do a quick fix. I love that Glide allows us to do this now, to change the column type of a basic Saves so much work. I'm having to delete and redo. There we go. That looks better. 
So you see here that um, this first random die is a three, okay? So now I have a three and a three and a three uh, for the 10-sided, the eight-sided, the six-sided, and the four-sided, okay? So now, um, while it's generating a random number, right? Three here, for example, I'm actually grabbing the number three for each kind of die that you see here. And then just using some visibility conditions, we're only going to show the correct die that we chose. All right, so hopefully that all makes sense, that now I have some random images based on that relation, based on the random single value, which is based on a relationship to the array column that we chose, and it's pulling in those images. All right, so we've done all the work on the back end. Now all we have to do is create the interface on the front end. So coming here to our layout view, we've already created our choice component, right? Four, six, eight, and 10. Uh, we now need to create a switch component, which is going to um, write to that user-specific Boolean column that is going to be a true or a false based on whether or not we are rolling a two-sided die. So go ahead and insert a, a switch component, have it uh, write to the user-specific roll two dice column, and you don't need any filters or visibility condition on this. Okay, so when I check the box, it's gonna mark that user-specific column as true, otherwise it's false. All right, next, we need to pull in some images. What I recommend doing is starting with one image and then we'll clone it. Uh, let's start with our four-sided die. So I'm gonna grab the image of our four-sided dice one. This is gonna be the image for that first random number, just for the four-sided die. And so I'm referencing image. I'm pulling the four-sided dice one image column. I wanna show the whole image. I'm making it small, that way I can fit two dice on a screen if need be. And for the features, we're only going to show this image when dice sides, that user-specific column, this one here, equals four. So right now we're seeing a 10-sided die, not a four-sided die, because we're not rolling a four-sided die, right? We're rolling a 10-sided die. So if I wanted to show this, I'd have to make sure that dice size equals four, okay? And because dice sides equal four, uh, it does all the relations and calculations on the back end, so we're only gonna get the numbers one through four. And in this case, our random value is a two. Okay, so we're showing that second image where dice size equals four. Okay. All right, next, what I would do is I would clone this image and then change it so that we're gonna show the four-sided dice two, that second random number, okay? And this should preserve our features where uh, dice size equals four, but we're gonna add one more visibility condition. We need it to be where the uh, roll two dice Boolean column equals true, where it is true. So we need both conditions here. So that's why you're not seeing that second four-sided die because we didn't mark this true. Once we do, right, now both of these Conditions are met, and we can see the second die. All right, the rest of the sheet is basically just cloning those images and setting the value so that it matches six, matches eight, matches 10. Let me show you an example. So here I'll clone an image. I'm now gonna reference the six-sided dice one as the image, and then under features, I'm gonna show when the dice size equals six. For that second six-sided image, again, it's gonna reference the six-sided dice two, and it's gonna show when dice size equals six and when roll two dice equals true. So I should now have the ability to choose the number six and show one value. And as you see there, every time I change the sheet, it changes the die. Cool, right? All right, so repeat that process for the eight-sided die and for the 10-sided die. <clears throat> Next. If we're rolling a 10-sided die, it'd be nice to show the combined value. So I have a basic table here. I have a basic table component, and I've just put in one line. I wrote the word total, and then I'm grabbing that math, or sorry, that if-then-else column 
to show if it's two. So if it's two, it's going to show the, the math column combined. Otherwise, it's going to show nothing because I have a visibility condition here where it's only going to show when rice or when roll two dice is true. Okay. <clears throat> Your 5 plus 9 is 14. Okay, and the last component is a re-roll button. So to create a re-roll button, uh, just create a new component, make it a button, and under features, the only thing you're going to do is under the action, we choose the reshuffle action, which is a neat little tool which will allow for random values to uh, regenerate, as well as if you have any of your inline lists sorted randomly, the reshuffle will uh, generate a new order to those inline lists. <clears throat> so whenever I hit reroll now, it's going to regenerate those random numbers that we chose from our single value columns in the data editor and give us new numbers, just like so. And because it's all done within Glide and there's no uh, Google spreadsheet formulas, all the calculations, all of the actions happen instantly. It's wonderful. All right, so that's it. You have a dice roller. Now, um, the only thing that this dice roller doesn't have is a way for you to capture your rolls, <clears throat> right? It's not like uh, every time I roll a dice, it captures it as part of a log. Uh, eventually, when Glide releases combined actions or triggered actions, or whatever they happen to call it, what we could do is, and maybe we'll come back to it once Glide releases that feature, is that every time this button gets clicked, not only does it reshuffle, but it also fills out a new line in a dice uh, log sheet or something that will keep track of people's rolls, something like that, right? Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But for now, we have a live dice roller with custom dice and instant calculations, rolling one die or two, and it's all user specific, so that way you can use the app and I can use the app at different times, they have completely different. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me at robert.petito at woodward.edu. And as always, thanks for